Hi everyone, Christina here. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm doing a live chat here at YouTube tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. If you wanna check what time that is for your time zone, head over to Facebook, I'll have a post there with a link for where you can convert the time to wherever you live. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the live chat. We're just gonna do a little bit of crafting supply organization and then I'll answer some questions and we'll just uh, see where it takes us. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Okay, and on to today's video. I made a baby card, a congratulations baby card last week for a friend. She's actually a YouTuber as well. Uh, her channel is Pretty Neat Living and she just announced last week that she's expecting and so I wanted to send her a baby card and I asked her today if I could address an envelope to her in one of my videos. Now this is not her home address. <laughs> this is her UPS box and um, she shares it on her channel so I'm not violating her privacy or anything and I did ask her for permission as well. But I just wanted to decorate this envelope, something special to go along with that baby card. It doesn't necessarily match the baby card that I made, but uh, it's just something fun to do. So I started out with a black A2 envelope, and I have taped down the envelope to a craft sheet, and then I taped the medium dot stencil from Simon Says Stamp over the top. Now I'm using some white pigment ink from Simon Says Stamp, as well as a mini round blending tool to sponge on just a really thin, light layer of this white pigment ink. I want the, the ink to be more concentrated on the left edge of the envelope and have it sort of fade off toward the center of the envelope. And because this is such a really thin layer of pigment ink, I wasn't too concerned about letting it dry for, for an extended period of time. Pigment, this white pigment ink is pretty well known for needing quite a bit of time to dry, but this was such a thin layer, I didn't think it needed much time to dry. I hit it with my heat tool and it was just perfect to go. So now I'm gonna move on to actually doing the uh, lettering on the envelope. And I shared this quote on Instagram a few weeks ago and a lot of you asked what uh, marker I was using or what brush I was using, what paint, things like that. So I thought I would use the exact same tools on this envelope. I'm using this watercolor set. This is the Gonzai Tombi watercolor set from Kuratake Zig. And the gold pan is what I used. Now the thing that's interesting about brush lettering with watercolors, um, or specifically with these metallic watercolors that I've discovered, is that it's really best to kind of get the color going and then move it to a palette. And I do this because I discovered that as I was writing with the gold watercolor, I kept having to add more and more water to that pan. And it's because the moisture was seeping down into the bottom layers of the pigment and it wasn't staying on the surface. And because of that, I wasn't getting a consistent color for all of my brush lettering. So after I sort of discovered that, I started moving all of the colors to a separate palette. And that makes it so that the um, moisture of the pigment of the paint stays pretty much the same while I'm lettering. And I don't have any of those problems with inconsistent, uh, inconsistent coloring when I'm doing my brush lettering. It's a little bit easier. So the brush I'm using today is a size zero round watercolor brush. Now I really wanna stress to you guys the size of brush and the brand of brush, it's not as important as you learning how to use a brush in general. A lot of you ask or are curious about the size of brush and the brand. I get that question, I think, the most out of any question when it comes to brush lettering. And I always want to stress to you guys that it really doesn't matter. This is just a starting point. I want to let you guys know that um, you can get similar results using a variety of sizes of brush. You could use anything from a triple zero brush to like a four or five or six size brush. It really just depends on how much pressure you're applying when you use the brush. So I've used some uh, larger brushes and gotten very similar results to what I'm showing you today um, just by using a very light touch. It's, it really just depends on uh, your style and your experience and as you get to know the medium and practice your brush lettering. So if you already have some round brushes in your stash, uh, 
go ahead and try those out. You don't need to go out and buy anything specific or new in order to try some brush lettering. In fact, I would really recommend that you use what you have first and then you'll have a better idea of what you might want to go out and try. So for example, if you have a size four round brush and you discover that you kind of have a little bit more of a heavy hand and you like to have some smaller lettering, you might decide to try a size one. It really just depends on uh, what look you're going for and also on your level of experience so you know what to get. So now I'm gonna move on to the her address. And I knew I wanted to have her address be on two lines. So I took a pencil and drew in some little notches so I could draw some guidelines with the top line being uh, higher. So I took my clear T-square ruler and I just very lightly drew on those guidelines. You'll notice that I'm holding my pencil very, very lightly. This is because I don't want to press the lines into the envelope too much. I'm going to eventually erase them so they'll be gone, but I don't want there to be any um, leftover indentation from drawing those guidelines on. So now I'm going to start using my Jelly Roll pen. This is just a white Jelly Roll pen, and I'm very slowly writing in the address. And I wanted to mention to you guys that uh, I shared on Instagram last week, maybe the week before, that I was doing a lot of fill-in puzzles, kind of like crossword puzzles. And as I was doing those, I was practicing my numbers and letters, coming up with different styles and just different ways of writing really simple letters and keeping it very legible. This directly um, affects when I'm addressing envelopes because I really discover different styles of writing, what I, what I like, and it helps me be more consistent when I start writing in that style. So this is one of those styles that I practiced while I was doing some fill-in puzzles. And those fill-in puzzles are actually really fun to do, especially like when you're watching a movie or if you're listening to an audiobook. It's kind of like multitasking, and in a way you get to um, like follow along with the story if you're listening to a book, and then also practice your handwriting at the same time. It's kind of really fun. So in between the city, state, and zip code, I painted in some gold hearts. And because I still had quite a bit of gold paint left over after I finished the addressing and her name, I thought I would go ahead and add some gold on the edges of the envelope. So um, first I erased those guidelines like I mentioned before, and then I took uh, just this flat brush. You could use any brush for this because this isn't anything uh, particular to the size of brush, but I just painted those edges. In fact, after I initially painted it on, I kind of scraped it a little bit so I'd get a little bit of a thicker paint line on the front of the envelope. And this is just gonna give it a nice detailed edge. I've done this in the past with some embossing powder and like dragging the edge of the cardstock through a Versamark pad and then adding some gold metallic embossing powder. But since I had this gold out and I didn't wanna waste any of that gold paint, I just decided to just paint it on there and it worked fabulously. Um, it was a little bit faster than doing the embossing and also I knew that it would match the gold because I was using that same gold paint. So to finish off the envelope, I just had to add some postage. These are two stamps that I have in my stamp stash. Um, I like to tear them off and get them sized up. In fact, usually I like to figure out what stamps I'm using before I start the envelope um, because I want to make sure the sizing is just right. In this case, I didn't. I kind of wish I would have because I would have moved that address down just a little bit, but it's okay. It turned out okay. So I just put those two stamps on. I'm using some extra postage because it is a dark envelope with some white writing and I want to make sure it gets to the destination. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope to see you in tomorrow's live chat. Once again, thanks so much for watching today's video. On screen are three other envelopes that I've addressed in videos here on my YouTube channel. So if you wanna check those out, click on any of those right now. You can visit my blog at kwarnerdesign.com and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel up there in the left corner. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will catch you guys next time.